The business needs to take ownership of the sign-off of that evidence and sign-off of the functional designs. So often, business businesses um, pay a cursory sign-off and, and sign-off things without really understanding them. So we've got to start to um, articulate the, the design well back to the business as an IT department and also enable the business to understand and sign that off. As a result, the business needs to own business testing and define tests which are traceable back to and validate the requirements. In other words, have we built the right system? So IT, have we built the system right? And in terms of business testing and validation, have we built the right system? Does it meet our requirements? They also need to make sure that the, the business testing checks whether the system integrates well with the existing systems and existing business processes? Does it fit into the target operating model? And, and will people be able to use it and understand it? Will people be able to be trained in it and can we run the operation and can the people we have in the operation um, get to grips with, with this business change and the system that supports it? We also need to make sure that within the business context the system performs. Uh, it's fast enough to host the number of users we've got, uh, the web channels that are coming into it, and of course that it's secure and we, we, we can't uh, have our data hacked or our data lost in any way. And as I've said, we need to make sure that the um, system and the business change actually works with the target operating model and the, the business organization. I strongly believe that with the business taking this approach we will lower the cost of ownership, reduce risk, increase benefits and, and therefore increase profit. Um, I, I'm getting a question in about um, how this approach would lower costs um, because it seems to add effort not reduce it. And I think the, the, the question around makes a very good um, observation that there is an increase in effort focused on business activities to ensure good testable requirements and, and validating what's delivered against them, ensuring it works in the, in the target operating model. So that's true. However, much of the effort is simply redirected in a targeted and focused way so the business is no longer expending effort on the wrong things, firefighting in production, for example, or working on workarounds for things that don't work, um, and it's spending time on the right things. I think, in addition, I'll mention static testing. Um, it's an accepted fact that defects found earlier in the life cycle cost significantly less than those in production. Uh, Barry Bohm's work on the economics of, uh, of software engineering um, suggested that. Um, and, in, and the British Computer Society suggests that for a 3% investment of project budget in static testing, up to 70% of defects can be found before a line of code is written or a system is selected and configured. So front-loading of business effort, uh, getting involved in good requirements, in validating those requirements, in static testing those requirements, in, in having them traceable, the tests traceable back to those requirements, is all going to save cost and effort further downstream. So I strongly do believe that this will lower the cost. Uh, of, of ownership going forwards and increase the benefits realised. So what I'm trying to say here is, uh, with, with uh, apologies to Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg ad address, we do want to see independent and objective testing of the business, by the business and for the business. So how do we achieve that? Well, the business isn't necessarily stacked out with test professionals. Uh, test professionals tend to um, be in, in the IT departments uh, or in third parties. So, so first of all, you need to uh, partner with uh, business savvy, people who have a good business knowledge, um, test professionals, who can provide the, the capacity and the capability to establish uh, how you're going to do testing in the business, the policy and the strategy, to, to help plan, analyze and define and design what the business testing would look like to help coordinate and communicate about business test execution when it's going well, what defects are being found, to report back on business confidence, business risk and business benefits, um, and to mediate, translate, negotiate with IT and third parties as a critical friend. Uh, in other words, what I'm suggesting is that the business needs to establish a, a, testing, a business testing capability, but they might use their, their, their critical friends in IT um, to, to help them do that. And, and again, we see business people go into IT to do user acceptance testing in the, in the IT-led model. Um, we also ought to be seeing IT 
business, uh, testing professionals with, with business knowledge coming into the business and, and potentially rotating people around so they keep their knowledge uh, current and relevant. So we need to combine potentially business and IT testing in one uh, centre of excellence that focuses all of the testing capability and effort into one uh, organisational structure. So what I'm saying is don't let IT and third parties mark their own homework. So what am I saying IT and, and, and third parties should do? Well, they do still have a role and, and clearly um, we would expect our IT delivery factories to continue to design and build systems, to provide evidence of the unit testing and system testing, in other words that they have built the system right, uh, give us confidence that they've met contractual quality gates and there's a very important message here you need to build quality gates quality criteria metrics into the into the contracts with your internal IT department or your third parties the IT um, department or third party are clearly going to fix defects found in any stage of testing including the business testing they're going to manage configuration and releases particularly when there are defect fixes to be implemented and retested and you know as a result we expect them to uh, deliver on time to cost at the required quality and demonstrate that they've delivered that scope and quality that we expect um, so we as a business um, testing capability need to give IT and third parties space to do their job in other words to, to, to govern and assure we will govern and assure the work of IT and third parties I'm being asked a question what do I mean by governance and assurance? Uh, quite simply, to establish the quality gates, quality criteria and metrics you expect IT and third parties to meet. And, and then to ensure that they do meet them through inspection and sign off of the evidence they provide. So governance insurance and assurance is a, a key part of business testing. Okay, um, just want to take a look at the roles and responsibilities in this.